everyone, welcome back to the channel of Ecoholics. So in today's video, you're going to learn a mathematical method for checking quasi-convexity. I have done a video where I taught to check quasi-convexity through the graphical uh, method. If you wish to see that video, please go to the link in the description box below. So let us see. In graphical method, we learned certain features. How can we check whether a function is quasi-convex or not? But it is not always possible to make graphs and then check accordingly whether my function is quasi-convex or not. Because making graph for some kind of functions is a big task to do when you are sitting in an exam. So this method is going to help you with all those functions. So when I say checking the mathematical method, one very important assumption is that the function should be twice differentiable. So function is twice differentiable. Only if the function is going to be twice differentiable, I can check quasi-convexity through this method. Otherwise, I cannot. So what we have to do in this method is, we are going to formulate a bordered Hessian matrix. So I taught the concept of bordered Hessian matrix in the video of quasi-convexity part two. You can check that video as well. So in bordered Hessian matrix, we make a matrix like this. Suppose I have a function of n variables. So I can do its derivative with respect to n variable, but I just have to go till first and second order derivative and not much more than that. So bordered Hessian matrix takes this form, zero, f dash 1, f dash 2, and f dash n. Then f dash 1 here as well as f dash n here. So what are these? f dash 1 represent the first order derivative with respect to first variable. f dash 2 represents first order derivative with respect to second variable. And likewise, first order derivative with respect to nth variable. I have filled the same thing on in this first column as well. So this is f dash n. Now, coming to the second row, since we are working with f dash 1 here, so f dash 1 would be constant. But now I have to do second order derivative starting from here. So because I have to do second order derivative, so first I will do with respect to first variable only, then with respect to second variable, then same way with respect to nth variable. Uh, next to this, following the same pattern, f double dash. So whichever row you are working with, whatever is the first order derivative there, you have to keep that constant throughout the row. Since here the first order is with respect to nth variable, so n1, then f double dash n2, and likewise f double dash nn. So this is my bordered Hessian matrix. Now next to this, what usually happens in in most of the exam, you just get two variable case. So when it is about two variable, let me introduce a next row here, which is f dash two. So it's going to be f dash two to one, f double dash two to and f double dash two n. So in most of the exams, you will observe that you have a function of two variable. So because you have a function of two variable, so your matrix would just be limited to this part these nine components would make for your matrices. So three columns and three rows over here. So for quasi-convexity, what you have to do is, you have to check the determinant of the sub-matrices. So when I talk about zero f dash one, and f dash one, f double dash one one, this part of the matrix, the first two columns and first two rows, they make up my D1 the determinant of the first matrix. So it should be negative. Similarly, when I will be taking these two columns and these two rows, which comes out to be f dash one, f double dash one one, f dash two and f double dash one two, that is my D2. As I've already talked about these concepts in the video of quasi-concavity, so you can also go to that video for understanding that in an elaborative way. So this should also be negative. Similarly, when I'm going to find out all the order determinants, all of them should be negative. Less than zero or equal to zero. This is a necessary condition, but when I say dn, every determinant is strictly 
negative is strictly less than zero, that is the sufficient condition. In case of quasi-concavity, even odd followed a different manner, but in quasi-convexity, each and every one of the every determinant should be negative only. So this is the mathematical method for learning the concept of quasi-convexity. If you want to understand this method with the help of an example, we also have a video on that thing. So you can go to the link in the description box below for finding the part three of this video. Thank you everyone for watching. Also, if you found this video useful, please like it, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and also let us know in the comment section which all topics you want videos from us. Thank you everyone.